Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Phil Risher. And on today's episode, we're going to be discussing how to leverage pictures out in the field with reviews to convert more leads and sales with your home service business. Today, we have Pierce Burkhald with us. He's the founder and CEO of Real Work Labs. Pierce, thanks so much for joining us today, man. Yeah, I certainly appreciate that. Yeah. So can you take us back? Like, how did you end up getting into the trades or digital marketing? How does this, how did that all come about? Yeah. So my background is all in digital marketing. So to be honest, I literally could not fix my own sink if you asked me to. Uh, my, my, forte, my forte is all about uh, really what it comes down to is empathy over the internet. That's mm. what I'm very good at. So I've actually, I'm just a sales jockey. Uh, I've been in inside sales doing digital marketing for the past like 12 years. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, yeah, I started my career and I worked for a company called Yodel. Uh, anyone with PTSD from that, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> uh, so I started at Yodel back in the day um, and that was back in, you know, 2000 and uh, 2012, something like that. And basically like I worked with home services and sold to them, never really understood it. And Yodel and a lot of companies that I'd worked with thereafter, you know, their bread and butter is making money on law. They sell to lawyers, right? So mm. as a marketing agency, like I saw the websites going out and I knew there was the lawyer websites, the medical websites, and then all the new reps that get hired, they throw them on GCs, throw them on blue collar. Oh, he's new. And then they graduate into law, right? Mm. Go to law school. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and so I knew that that was a pattern. And when we were thinking about launching a company in general, uh, my partner and I, Really, like, I was like, look, I want to focus on home services. It's uh, with, you know, climate change, with infrastructure. I think that that's going to be a huge honey hole, just like where there's going to be a lot of business. But at the same time, you know, I know that every other company out there doesn't innovate on it. I know that agencies serve lawyers and home services or they have branding that espouses otherwise. But it's kind that's of, right. you know, I, I don't always think that's the case. Can be. I'm not saying yeah. all agencies are bad. It's just how it is. So anyways, when I came back, you know, really looked at home services again. Nothing changed. Everyone's websites are flat. It's kind of the same shit. Angie's List, Home Advisor, same review systems. And meanwhile, you've got Zillow for houses. You've got Amazon. There's been so much development everywhere else online with e-com, real estate. And so it just occurred to me that something's missing. So as we went about talking with customers and getting going, just became super clear that the internet doesn't really make sense for home services. Like everybody else, every other agency, every other service, tends to focus on the same brick and mortar concept that like your customers drive to you, like you're a yogurt shop, but like they drive to them, but the internet doesn't reflect that. So yeah. or the idea of like the search plumbers near me doesn't make any sense. Cause I don't care if a plumber is near my house. Why would I give a shit? Right? Yeah. Like if you service my, my neighborhood, I care about that, but why would I prefer one plumber over another who's closer? Like I'm, this isn't a gas station. So there's just inconsistencies that we sought to, to fix. Um, we've had a lot of success with it, uh, being able to address those issues. Yeah. So with Real Work Labs, did you start as a traditional agency of making websites and stuff, and then you figured yeah. out this was a problem? Yeah. Can, so how yeah. did that transition come about? Well, uh, I hate to break it to everybody, but most of the digital marketing space is reselling. <laughs> so you can go to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. You can go to Outback. You can go anywhere. Guess what? The steaks, they all come off the same truck, right? And in the world of digital marketing, and I'm not saying all agencies do this or that it's, it's necessarily bad. Yeah. It's very easy to start a marketing agency. That's why there's so many. Yep. And so basically we came together and I was like, look, I know how to sell you know, my partner. Uh, you know how to do websites. You know how to do. And, you know, we can resell some services and get going. So it's pretty lightweight. We were up and running and focusing on it. But the problem, like I mentioned, is that like the feedback was, you know, most of my business is word of mouth and it's coming from neighbors. And when we were looking at websites, like as a salesperson, right, like trying to find that empathy, I'm like, first off, I'm not helping anyone solve a problem. Like they have, I, I'm the same problem exists. I'm not fixing it. Yeah. Like all I'm doing is just like slapping another name or logo on something and it's not, it's not going to be helpful. So this is where uh, we had the thesis and came up with like some team members to, to, to utilize getting photos and how to do reviews differently. Um, and we had a lot of resounding success, you know, some lightning in a bottle moment uh, mm. when we got started. So we went and God willing, we got VC money, which traditionally does not go into the home service space yes. uh, before the pandemic. Um, and so we were able to innovate and, and get going from there. Wow. Yeah. You're in the, the Sil Silicon Valley of the South, the Austin, yeah. Texas. <laughs> Austin Texas, man. Yeah. What's up? 
That, that's awesome. It's so funny that you bring that up because I actually had a similar, I was the director of business development at a duck cleaning company. We work with these big marketing firms and it is this the cookie cutter rinse and repeat. And I'm like, yeah. well, you don't know my data. You don't know anything about us. How do you know how to market us if you don't even know what my reports say or anything about what we do? Yep. And, and to your point, so you came up with an innovation that would help with conversions on a website. So when someone comes yep. to the website, they see real work happening around them. And they yes. say, this is actually my neighbor. Can you tell us like how that, so, so you, you had this idea, then you, you built this thing, you put on a website and it, it crushed it or something. And then you said, yeah, we're good. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there was a lot of different KPIs that we wanted to focus on, but the main one that we've continued to follow is we don't, we don't want to chase, like, of course, getting visibility, getting found, all that good stuff is hugely important, but we decided early on with our mission statement of building trust online is going to be the future of the internet. And this was before chat GPT. And this was about like every company out there is using appeals to credibility. They're using seals, a plus BBB rating. They have pictures of their work, et cetera. And so overall we saw a lot of the content and we continue to look at this from the homeowner perspective. So when you look at a website, you have to ask yourself, who is this made for? And you have one of two masters, right? One is Google and the other one's actually the homeowner. And nine times out of 10, the majority of the real estate on the website is engineered towards making Google happy. So you have a bunch of words and blocks and paragraphs that no one gives a shit about and no one's ever read. You, the owner, you've probably never read it, right? And if you don't, who the hell is it made for? So this yep. is actually a problem Google has that they've been fixing the last 20 months with their helpful content update. So what we did is we took the photos from out in the field. We had the mobile app. We had the ability and the thought of mapping and geotagging Google reviews. And we had some cursory UI around that and then continued to progress on it until we got to where we are today. But the, uh, the continued um, perspective that I have and I urge anyone with a website to have is to continue thinking about the intended audience and what problems do they have. When you can solve someone's problem, that is when you make money. So when you're someone... Even if it's Google now with the helpful content update, Google's trying to match what human beings want. They're trying to move away from algorithms and to people, right? That's, that's been going on for a long time. Yeah. Actually, it's got baked into the core signal this month. Uh, so ultimately, the better you can have a homeowner hat on of like, okay, I have two problems. My HVAC unit's not working and who the hell isn't going to scam me? And how do I know this person won't scam me? What else is going on? Can I trust these online reviews? Like, what if I think they're fake? What if I have too good of a rating? Is that bad? What if my website, what's unique? What do I only have that's different? And if it's, oh, I have good service and I do these good things and these other, my competitors are, you know, they're bad, they do whatever. You may know that, but the homeowner doesn't. And so it's the onus is on you to build that neighborhood brand to show you're that, that local hero in their neighborhood. And that's what it's really all about. We just continue to obsess and focus on the problems that homeowners have, which translates into benefit for, for our home service companies. Yeah. So to my knowledge, you have all these reviews. The reviews are just sitting on Google. Maybe you have a plugin that scrolls through on your website. Yep. And what you do is you take these reviews and then you plop them on a map on someone's website that then shows in your neighborhood real pictures and real reviews that have happened around you. So then it helps build trust and credibility for your business. Does that sound yes. about right? Yeah. You want to look at it. So the name of the platform is called Crux, but I would urge any company with or without Crux, uh, and I'll explain why in a second, but it's all about a constellation of proof points. So like every HVAC or any website on the planet for home services generally has four things. They have their service areas, they have a photo gallery, they have reviews, right? So mm -hmm. I guess three things. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then you have like keywords, stuff for Google, right? So you have these four things. Uh, and you have them in different places and we bring them all together. Right. So we want to bake or constellate like a constellation, all the little dots. We want to tie all the little dots together. So just like Gemini, Virgo, right, like the horoscope, the stars, yep. when you can tie little dots together, you can suddenly drive tremendous meaning. Right. Yep. And whether you do that with a platform like us or in general, you should start looking at the data points that you have on your business and what's meant to build trust. And you should try to bring those together as much as you can, because the online world is a very low trust environment. However, I'm sure everyone that's ever listened here has put out door knock, has put out um, yard signs, have the truck out front. Why do you even wrap your trucks? What's the purpose? So that when you're on site and someone sees you, a neighbor walking by calls you, right? 
And the, the real world is a high trust environment. So what we're trying to do is take a low trust environment, high trust environment, and we're trying to connect the dots. Because if your business runs on that word of mouth referral, that those neighbor referrals, then there's a disconnect. And as soon as your truck leaves the front yard or leaves the, the, the driveway, you lose that and we're trying to maintain it. So in general, it's about taking the review and it's contextualizing it. So geotagging it, where did it happen? Show pictures of the work you know, go the extra mile that you can to build a constellation of proof points around that review and around your content, especially yeah. as we move further into generative AI, it's going to be easier and easier for a single piece of media to be falsified. But the better that you have a constellation of them, you know, the more proof points that you have uh, around the work that you're doing and that you're legit. And that's, that's, that's what we're trying to prove. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. And I I think the constellation and having that hub of like owning a neighborhood, a lot of people want to own neighborhoods. Well, this is one way that you can literally show that you own this neighborhood by having these things. Yeah, one, digitally. Yep. Exactly. One of the questions that I have for you is part of this is getting pictures out in the field from either homeowners or techs mm -hmm. and then pairing them with reviews. If there's a business owner and they're like, yeah, good luck trying to get my guy to take pictures, how, how to have you seen any creative ways to get the team like building it into your SOPs? I've seen one way or doing different promos or specials with your technicians, but what have you seen to help encourage that? Yeah. I mean, if it's not inside their core job responsibilities, it's always incredibly get difficult to get techs to do that. Right. And obviously with the worker shortage, like it's not like you can just go and fire them for not doing something small like that. So, you know, any system like, River, like the, the, the app we're talking on does not yeah. make you a better, it's not going to make you a better podcast, right? Yeah. It's not going to bring you, it, it, it's a tool, right? Same thing with Service Titan, Jobber, all these others. They can be a fabulous platform, but they're not going to make you a better team. So at the end of the day, what I have seen be successful is the teams that already have those SOPs in place mm -hmm. that, and it's not even just us, it's using in general, right? Like having mm -hmm. quality work. Uh, it kind of comes down to a couple of things I, I've seen in the past. One is like, don't pay, don't pay bottom barrel pricing to, mm -hmm. <laughs> like wages because yep. you get what you pay for, uh, you know, and I know that can be difficult. You don't want to raise prices, but most of the, the most successful HVAC companies, plumbers, et cetera, that I talk to that are like killing it, they, they pay over the top. They pay for good help and their good help is faithful and loyal and does what they have. It does what they need to. They trust, right? They trust the owner. The owner trusts them. And yeah. commerce happens. So you can try to force it and bake it in as much as you want. But um, I'll just say that if you have ways to incentivize it with the carrot, you know, that's generally the, uh, the best approach. And then holding accountable, right? And otherwise, you just have to make it really frictionless as much as you can. And if you're not, if you're not capturing those photos, you really have to focus on it. Um, in general, like, it's not even just a nice to have, like Google's helpful content update, which has been going on for 20 months. They are literally giving first person perspective, higher rankings on Google's, on Google's, God, selling like a boomer. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Not, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's going to give you higher ranking on Google Maps. It's going to help with your SEO. Your, your marketing agency is bugging you for content. You want to know why? Because they freaking need it yeah. to help you get ranked. And it's more important than ever. So I think it's a perspective shift that number one, like you have to start seeing your staff as content creators and enable that as much as possible. And you as a business will reap those benefits. And number two is you have to make sure you have a system or a tool that makes it as frictionless as possible. And number three, when you are capturing that content, do it the best way you can. If you're getting text messages or emails of images, you're stripping out EXIF data and metadata. When you mm -hmm. do that, you want to maintain it. So you needed to use G Drive, Dropbox, Company Cam, or us to preserve the resolution and preserve, um, preserve that EXIF data. So just have yeah. a good team, pay good money, right? And use the carrot as much as you can and make it easy. Yeah. I think so far in our discussion, the two themes are like on your website, you got to build trust with people that are coming to your website. So a simple fix is don't use stock photos, like use real pictures with logos yeah. and stuff. Yes. And then the second one is that Google is even encouraging now with the core updates and all these different things that they don't want AI generated stuff. They don't want stock stuff. They want real yep you know, the eat algorithm, they want real people. And so, and, and we even hear about this on, on TikTok and all the shorts and everything. Like they, people don't want glamorized stuff. They want real raw yes. stuff. Yes. So can you, can you speak to that about how that is, has been so beneficial? Yeah. I mean, 
to a couple of your points, um, absolutely. Authenticity, okay, is not like real estate glamour shots. It's not, right? It's got frayed edges. Don't yep. be afraid to have an image that is like, you know, it's, 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 it's got the frayed edges to it. That is perfectly okay because it's about authenticity. Like you're in the trades, man. Your jeans get dirty. It's all right. You know, you don't have yep. to, you're not trying to have, like win a modeling contest. That's fine, right? Yeah. Um, and as far as the updates in general, um, that's 100% correct. The EAT uh, guidelines, you know, that's what I was talking about. In November, yeah. Google added experience to EAT. So yeah. now it's EEAT e e e million, yeah. right? Yeah. So the reason that they're doing that is they're looking for that first person perspective, even built into your Google reviews. So they overhauled Google reviews in November and added that new EAT paradigm to it. That's so right. I can't tell you how many businesses I've talked to with automated review systems that kind of rank like shit and they've lost rankings. And it's because all of the reviews, like a, re a five-star review with no words to it is almost useless. Correct. Right? You need to have photos in the reviews That's as right. much as you can, which is what we help with, but you should have a way of, of following up on that manually somehow. Also, you need to have 200 characters in that review. Call out the technician. If your reviews are not written from first person perspective, they're not doing you full justice either. Um, so that's a, that's, that's been a really big component and something that, you know, we, we focus on is driving quality. So you have to, again and again, focus on the quality of the review and the quality of the content. Um, I will say that businesses that begin to engage or even tap into the data you've already got. If you have photos of work you've done, it's trapped value, man. It's just That's sitting right. there on your phone or in your CRM and what's it doing for you, right? Kind of the same thing with reviews, trapped value. It's just sitting there. It's not an asset, right? Yeah. So you, if you deploy that and you build, it's like it's like brushing your teeth. You got to make new hygiene. You got to make new habits when the internet changes. And that's absolutely what's what's been happening. And like I said, it, it did get baked in this month. It is now Google intentionally is making a 40% traffic reduction to websites that it deems as spammy or inauthentic. That's how severe this is. So if your website goes down or it's not traffic and getting good traffic, that's why. Yeah. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. The eat algorithm, having pictures in there is going to show up on your most relevant reviews. All that kind yep. of stuff, I completely agree. So let's say there's a business owner out there. They have a technician. The technician is taking before and after pictures on their cell phone and texting them to the customers. Then they have another text message or QR code, and they're, they're getting a review here. And then they have another text message that says, this is your name of your technician. Are you saying that there's a way to kind of summarize all this together and just like make this happen so that it's not so fractionalized and all over the place? Yeah, so... Like I mentioned before, there's few companies with VC dollars um, other than like your big CRMs, right? Which are yeah. fabulous platforms, but yeah. there's just not a lot of innovation in home services, okay? And uh, I think there will be in the future, but yes, the more you can consolidate that. So for instance, um, we, with our platform, when you request a Google review, we send the photos that you're already taking in the review request to mm -hmm. the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So then they already have the photo and encouraging them to leave that photo in the review. Yeah. So of course, like when you can consolidate uh, those steps um, and add that personal touch as well, right? Like yeah. if you have the authenticity and that outreach, something personalized, it's always gonna be more, more successful. Um, but in general, the, a lot of the, depending on the kind of job too, I mean, the more that you can try to get people in the moment, right? Like after you've done the work and the cold air is blowing, things like that, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it's much more impactful to get that review in the moment. Um, but then in general, any reviews that you already have, you know, geotagging them, uh, we've seen that really be accretive for the maps listing uh, cool. once you start doing that. So, you know, you have your traditional business, you know, they're showing up five, six miles and then 10 miles out. We, uh, you know, we use a lot of geo grids and we see those, those lights flicker on once they start geotagging. So you've got additional options to enrich and add depth to your reviews on your own too. Yeah. So changing gears a little bit more on the yeah. sales side and lead conversion side, a business owner is saying, okay, well, this is cool. You know, maybe I add this to my website or something, but like, what does the actual data say as far as conversion rates or website traffic into leads or, or closing more deals by having mm -hmm. something like this, a map, you know, on my website or something? What have you seen? Yeah. So um, 
I guess specifically to us and our approach, we see an average when people can see your mapped reviews. And remember, this is a function of how many reviews you have to map or jobs that you have mapped. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a shit in, shit out system. You know, you put good, good shit in, good shit comes out. Yeah. Uh, but on, on the median increase uh, in the likelihood of a phone call or a conversion is 35% uh, in ticket base, like HVAC, plumbing, electrical, when yeah. your traffic engages or sees your mapped reviews, just even having it yeah. uh, from a homeowner perspective, it helps your business, it helps your website stand out in a way that you just literally can't do otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's a KPI that we track. Um, I would say in general that you have those two masters, right? You can either make Google and traditionally try to make Google as happy as you can with SEO. And that comes at the cost of a human being. Cause again, no one reads that shit. No one's like, Oh, this H1 tag, this T1 tag. Like, exactly. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> right. It, it's uh, like the, the service area pages, it's good to build them out. And we talk yeah. about service area pages as something important, but you could take it to the next level by also having reviews and pictures of actually that service area, that neighborhood, that, yeah. that uh, city and kind of, you make Google happy while also building the trust of your, your community with real stuff. Yep. And that's the point of the helpful content update is to bridge that gap. So yep. you're very much correct on those service area pages. Um, you know, for us, one of our biggest success metrics is right off the website with converting that traffic, of course, helping with the SEO, the Google maps yep. ingress points to it. You might be saying, well, not everyone is going to call, you know, go to my website. I mean, if it's an emergency, yeah, they're going to call right off Google, but if they're going to your website, that means that they're more discerning. It means that maybe it's a bigger project, right? But they're shopping around. It's probably going to be a more serious subject or something for you to work with. Um, so in general, when you have those service area pages, um, two things. One is that you do not want to have duplicative content for the love of God. That's if correct. you have service area pages or service pages, and they've got duplicative content on them and it's spammy, or you have a thousand pages or something, uh, life's going to be kind of tough for your website. Or soon. Yeah. Uh, if, 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 if you don't know what a service area page is, basically if you're in Austin, Texas, and then you service other cities around you, you build out specific pages on your website for those other cities. So that way your website will rank on those other pages. But mm -hmm. to Pierce's point, you don't want to have duplicate content because it's even worse now because Google's just penalizing people left and right because you're just trying to game the system without actually adding real yep. trustworthy information about that area and what you serve in that area. So yep. yes, I, I completely agree with you. Um, but what have, what have you seen as far as, because I think I saw that y'all have rolled out like a sales tool also of using this to mm -hmm. sell to neighbors out in the field. Yeah. So this is another, another vector that we take the question. One of the main ones that guides us, right? When you're, when you're obsessive about solving a problem. And I think this really, this comes back to the home service company and a problem for homeowners. They're related, but the question is, if Google reviews are so important and they're enough for strangers to call you, then they absolutely have to have value in other areas of the sales funnel, right? But how are you supposed to use them? Like, oh, I have a 4.9. Okay, well, website, quote, over yeah. here, right? It's just, it's very difficult to apply that. Um, so we have our sales tool that you pull out on an iPad, your phone, et cetera. And it allows you to have a, a more in-person click experience uh, to show people and you can send it to someone ahead of time or show them in person or even include it in a quote, but it allows them to interact with your neighborhood brand, right? So mm -hmm. there's an experience where you've got the map of all the reviews that you've done attached with the, you know, photos of the work and videos of the work. Um, and then there's a way for them to filter. It's kind of like Zillow, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it, it's just like, cool. I'm looking for one bedroom, two bath, right? Here's, here's what I can see. So you know, it allows them to highlight their their neighborhood and highlight their zip code. And it's all about, again, the building that trust. Because trust is transitive, right? Like anyone that's been referred to anyone since the history of time, like, hey, what do you use? I trust you. I use this thing. Oh, okay. Then I'll trust that thing. It's that simple. That's right. right. And I think there's something to be said, like someone's at your house and they're, you know, replacing your HVAC system. And then you pull up and say, oh, well, this is what that person did down the street. And here's what they did. And here's how they painted yep. this and did this. And it's yep. like, you're not selling anymore. You're basically just showing them what their other neighbors did. And then you're yep. saying, this is what I would recommend for you. Cause that's what they did. Yep. And it's letting your, letting your work and your customers do as much of your selling for you as possible. Because look, your website, guess who's talking about you on your website, you, right? 
And yep. what people are actually looking for, this is why Reddit and TikTok and social media, this is what threatens Google, right? Google faces two threats. One is generative AI and the gray tide of rewritten spammy content. And yep. the other side uh, is that these other platforms are much more user driven. And so you can talk about your website and what you've done. I mean, even you giving a testimonial on your website is you saying someone said that. It's not yep. them saying it. And so overall, uh, the more real estate that you dedicate uh, throughout your sales process and your website to what other people have to say about you and highlighting that, uh, the better off you'll be. But that, that's exactly right. Yeah. What is some pushback that you get from, from business owners about or, or even maybe even do people give you pushback about like, don't take pictures of my house or anything like that with, with, with people about sharing their, their information? Well, they're not sharing information. There's no, um, what is it? P I I A like personally identifiable information. Like okay. as long as you're not taking a picture of like their house number or a license plate, right? Like if you're taking a video of like, Hey, so everyone, you know, this is, an HVAC unit, as you can see here, the coils burnt out, you know, you're going to know because you see X, Y, Z, or you're taking that before and after. It's pretty difficult to be revealing anything too, um, I guess, yeah. uh, too Personal. intimate there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're taking a shot at the exterior, but, uh, you know, you just have to look out for that. But, you know, by and large, with our map, right, like it's giving the address. Um, it's not giving the address. It's giving the zip code and the neighborhood. Mm. like the geographic neighborhood, it's not giving cross streets or an address. And we have privacy settings so okay. that you can change how close the, the map will zoom in. You know, are the Google reviews just initials? Is it the full name that they have on Google? So we have those privacy components, but you know, Google earth and Google street view, man, like I have so much information yeah. on them already. So, I mean, if you're sensitive or, you know, you, not you for your sensitive, but if you're already taking photos in your CRM, then you're already doing that, right? Okay. And if you're publishing those online, which you choose to do, I have had zero uh, complaints or feedback from our clients or our clients' clients about what goes online. Sometimes, to be honest, the main thing is like someone uploads a disgusting picture of something sometimes, yeah. you know, and you got to delete that. Like yeah. they think it's funny, yeah. <laughs> but like, like uh, that's definitely it. We, we had a duck cleaning company and they posted like a dead rat or something and we're like, dude, no. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't yeah. Take that's, that that's a little, that's authentic. I get it. It's a dead yeah. rat. I believe you. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's funny. So with AI, what, we don't want to, you know, we're not bashing AI here because there is a very good place with AI and automation and obviously you're in the tech industry. So what would you say like coming down the pike with what y'all do would be like some cool stuff that you can still implement it and still, you know, be in good graces of Google, but also doing cool stuff. What, what, do you, what is some new stuff? I mean, AI represents uh, like the, the cost of content has plummeted. Okay. So when you were getting blogs written by your marketing agency, what they did is turned around to virtual assistants out of the Philippines who write it and then send it back. And then you pay a retail price price. That's all that's going on mm -hmm. generally, right? Maybe they have someone in the U S that, you know, has one piece of the SOP and make sure it looks good. Yeah. But chat GPT and AI in general just represents the plummeting uh, cost of creating content. Mm -hmm. And that can be duplicated. You can go to chat GPT now and write your own blogs in a second. Yeah. So AI, AI is meant to take, the repetitive mundane tasks, whether you're a surgeon or whether you're a home service professional. And the way I would look at it is a hybrid of AI and authenticity, because clearly when it's coming from an AI, it's not, you know, it's always going to fall on that spectrum, in my opinion, of real. But That's at right. the same time, when you're paying a digital marketing agency, what's the difference, right? Now you can go to chat GPT and do it for free, or you could be paying a few hundred bucks elsewhere. And I'm not saying all agencies and the blogs they write are not valuable, yeah. but just speaking from layman's terms here about the content creation. So regardless of the route that you take, the reason that your agencies bug you for content is because you have to have that authentic. You have to have that authenticity. And Google itself has said that AI content is okay as long as it's helpful. So you should yeah. look at it as a springboard. You should look at it as a starting point. Like I'm sure authors writing books, the next best-selling book, it's probably going to be assisted by AI, right? Yeah, and then they're going to go in and tweak it afterwards. And that's the same approach that we take. Regardless of how the content is created, whether it's on your behalf, from you, or from someone else, like you really need to layer in, right, authentic components. And to be honest, 
this future uh, state where AI is making everything, there's so little authenticity on many yep. of the HVAC and plumbing websites I look at now anyways, that I don't really see how AI is not going to make it any less authentic because no. just because it's AI doesn't mean that it's it's not, you know, someone else wrote it from the Philippines. Like what's the That's difference? That's right. Yeah. We, so I would just, I would focus on, we, we do incorporate AI in our tool, right? Which is yeah. interesting because they're, kind of diametrically opposed, but they don't have to be competing with one another. There are absolutely ways that you use AI to generate responses, cut things together, right? Make a more efficient process for yourself while at the same time, right? Maintaining your, maintaining your authenticity and that brand with a homeowner. Yeah. I could even see with y'all's like, if, if it was to build like a mini summary report of like, this is the service that we did in this area or yeah. something like that could yep. be a pretty automated process if they gave yep. it some trigger information. And and to your point, like we had a blog post, a company said, hey, uh, a company went out of business next to us and we want to write a blog post about when they go out of business, use us. So we yep. asked them like, okay, what's five things that make you different? Five things that, that they were doing, you know, and then like use AI, write the thing and then put some unique stuff in there. And that, that, produce you know a bunch of leads for them because it actually imagine imagine sending out that kind of email or any email and this is what we have coming down the pipe here soon but imagine being able to insert the reviews and jobs from their neighborhood and that client list based on their zip code wow. now now that's a newsletter that you wrote for everyone but this yeah. is another vector of how you can personalize at scale using authenticity because when you break it down by neighborhood now you've made that email more relevant You've made that website landing page more relevant, right? You've made that exactly. mailer more relevant. So exactly. that's personalization at scale through geography. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty sick. I think that, yeah, that because then those service area pages now and it's easy. You just put in yep. there and then you have this. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's really cool. So what do you, what do you think um, is, is, so that's coming down the pike for, for the business. Is there any other cool stuff that's coming out that you would say like, Hey, this is something I could see. Yeah. I mean, in general, um, we're building more into the like exchange. Uh, so there's a couple of things we want to focus on what homeowners can do after they leave that Google review. Mm -hmm. And so soon homeowners will be able to share their Google review and, uh, photos of the work that you sent them mm -hmm. to neighbors over text message on Facebook and really mm -hmm. enable that behavior of like, you know, hopping on next door. Hey, is that a gunshot? Like, hey, can I borrow like, you know, someone's lawnmower? Oh, by the way, anyone know a good HVAC company? Mm -hmm. And then you, they can throw in the link of the job that, that, that you did for them. So mm -hmm. kind of like that digital flyer, right? That represents and being able to track it. Um, so enabling more of that behavior is really big for us. Um, in addition, having more technician based profiles for us uh, is going to be pretty big. So your technicians, uh, when they get reviews, having their own sort of mini version uh, of the map of their reviews that they've generated, mm -hmm. being able to generate leads and referrals when they talk with people and help it get tracked and show off the work that they've done. So wow. building more brand equity um, and uh, online identity for technicians. I think, I think that that would be amazing. Like in the service Titan chat that goes out and says like, Hey, this is your tech. You know, they've been with us for whatever, 10 years. If there was a link there that then they could see all their recent jobs yep. and all their stuff, that would be amazing. Extreme credibility. When you walk in the door, they've already seen all the work that you've done. That is. And these are the Google reviews that have, that yeah. I've gotten or Facebook reviews that I've gotten. Like, it's not just, again, we talked earlier about seeing your technicians as, as content creators. And the only way they're really going to do that especially with the average age of the technician you're generally looking at, like their online identity is, I mean, it's how we date, right? It's how we buy food. Like we have online profiles for everything. And in the white collar space, like I have a LinkedIn, which represents the corpus of my work, but technicians don't have that. So without teasing too much, the concept here is that the better and more that we can create brand equity and online identity for technicians yeah. and have them have a piece of the pie in terms of like, hey, this is what I did, then it's not just about, oh, go generate reviews for my company that only benefits me. Like it's an, a way for them to build a, an online sense of self too that can also you know carry with them into the future, something more per persistent. I think that that concept hasn't really taken off in the past because 
the only real software players in the home service game are CRMs, which is fair and they're fabulous yeah. platforms, but you know, they're not agnostic to other systems. So you may have that profile in service Titan, but when you leave service Titan, you don't have a profile anymore. So we're looking to be more cross cross platform and we want to help build that trust online and we want to do it for everybody. We want to have technicians have trust online and be able to build identity. We want to help businesses build identity at the neighborhood level. And we want to have homeowners be able to trust and those signals that are created and those service companies and those technicians, they should succeed based on the quality of the work they do and what those customers have had to say about them. Not who's plumber near me. Yeah. Well, that summarizes our conversation to, to the point, exactly yep. what you just said. Well, Pierce, this has been great. Where could people go to find out about you and, and your business and, and maybe yeah. figure, yeah, figure oh, it out? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. My, uh, my co-founder, he spent so much time making sure that I would not forget <laughs> that we have this specific page. So if we have to edit this, it's okay, but I got to yeah, find yeah, this. Fine. Rusty, if you're watching, I love you. I hope you're proud of me right now because I'm not forgetting something. Um, I believe it is Flash. Pete, right? Your name is L A S H. Yeah. Yes. Flash dot real work singular real work labs dot com. So just flash dot real work labs dot com. Awesome. And we will be able to get in touch with you right away. My 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 team is is always at the ready. Awesome. Yeah. Go check it out. Um, I don't really have any affiliation, but mostly they can track everything, which is great. They can see like, Hey, this was a good podcast. So yeah. And you guys get a, you, you get a discount as well. So we'll take care of, uh, some of the, uh, oh, awesome. we have, we have discounts on the pricing as well as up on some of the setups. So if awesome. you reach out, uh, we have that, we have that going on. So definitely go take a look and, and, you know, feel happy to speak with us or just learn things. It's okay. Yeah. Either way. Awesome. I appreciate that about you guys. I feel like it's very educational in the way that you carry yourselves. And I really appreciate that. It's not just like a hard sales pitch. So thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.